Right, so for those that are new, uh, new to, to here, it's, we have two services that's combined together, Tongan and English, which is why you'll see a lot of English and Tongan uh, of the same things. So uh, thank you to Aleki, and he's preached in the Tongan, uh, and I'll do in English for our children that are, um, that are raised up here, uh, so they can also be fed well the Word of God. All right, so we're on Acts 18, so we've been going through the whole series of Acts, and we're up to Acts chapter 18, verses 24 to 28. <coughs> now, if you do have your Bibles, you can pull out your Bibles, or you can just look on the screen. Um, the, the, the words are there. So, point one is verses 24, and that is the church must be competent in scriptures and use them correctly. Now, we'll, we'll learn here of a guy named Apollos. He was from Alexandria. How Aleki was explaining is in Egypt. Alexandria is in Egypt. And there was a big library there. Now, they were very smart. They were like ed very educated. And he, went, he ended up going to Ephesus. Now, in Ephesus, he meets Aquila and Priscilla. And they teach him more accurately the way of God. Even though he wasn't wrong, he knew about the baptism of John. And he preached correctly from there. Now, once they explained to him more accurately the way of God, then he wanted to go to Achaia. Now, Achaia is where Corinthian is. Now, Achaia is, another, is, a, is a different area. And he went to Corinth, and they ended up writing a letter. And Apollos goes there, and he's a big help to them there. Right? And he helps them, and he keeps going against the Jews, and he keeps proving from the scriptures that Jesus is the Messiah. All right, so can we read this together? Now a Jew named Apollos, a native Alexandrian, an eloquent man who was competent in the use of the scriptures, arrived in Ephesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, so there's a map there, so that way you can see. Um, it's a pretty bad one. But right here at the bottom, that's Alexandria. And where he went to was up where you see Lycia, Ephesus there, that's where he went. And he's arrived there. Now, he is competent in the use of scriptures. Now, when it says eloquent, that means he's very knowledgeable. He knows his word. He's fluent. Now, there is a correct and an incorrect way of using the scriptures. We see the effects of scriptures being used incorrectly today. All right, it's taken out of context to kind of support whatever beliefs or whatever we want to justify ourselves in how we live or how we want to be. All right? And we know the examples from the devil when he tried to tempt Jesus in the wilderness. You remember? He was tempting Jesus. And he's using scripture. He knows scripture. But he's just twisted it a little bit. And Jesus' reply was always using scripture correctly. Now, there's danger. We can see the dangers when we use scriptures incorrectly. When we use it properly, we glorify God. When we use it incorrectly, we glorify man. There's a, there's a difference. Properly, God. Incorrectly, us. All right? And when we actually use it properly, it encourages us. It warns us of the dangers of the world. It warns us of what's coming next. The coming wrath. We have assurances in the world, and it tells us how to survive that. All right, and that is through Jesus, who has warned us constantly through scriptures. Now, I'm going to give you an example of incorrect using scriptures. All right, incorrectly using scriptures. Now, one John four, verse sixteen. I've highlighted it. It's in purple. That way, you can just see what most people say. All right. They say this, God is love. That's it. Let me tell you the rest. God is love. Yes, we know God is love. What else? Is, does that mean God is love that we can continue to live and we use that to justify how we live? We still want to be greedy and forget God and go to stay at work? And we say God is love? Or we would like to live in sin and still say God is love? Does God love sin? The whole reason why Jesus came down was to pay for our sins. Right? And John 5, 14, it's highlighted there, 
This is the man Jesus healed. He was blind. And he goes to the temple, and then Jesus goes to the temple and sees him. And he says, I see you are healed. And he says, yes. And then Jesus says, see you are well, do not sin anymore, so that something worse doesn't happen to you. See, when you keep on sinning and you still want to live that life of sin, something worse is coming. And we have the warning today while we're still alive. Scripture used correctly, again, will glorify God, will encourage us and warn us. Used incorrectly glorifies us, our own desires, our fleshly desires. And then what comes next, like Jesus said, something worse. Point two is from verses 25 to 26, and that is God provides his church people to teach the way of God more accurately. Verses 25 to 26, if you can see it, let's read together. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he was speaking and teaching accurately about Jesus. Although he knew only John's baptism, he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. After Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way of God to him more accurately. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So again, even though he knew about the baptism of John, so he knew the baptism, maybe he didn't know the resurrection. Maybe all he knew was the baptism. He wasn't incorrect. He preached properly. He preached accurately. But he may have not known the resurrection. Maybe he didn't know about the baptism of the Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. Maybe he didn't know about receiving the Holy Spirit. So we don't know. But Priscilla and Aquila heard him in the synagogue speaking boldly the word. And then they put him to the side. They didn't put it in front of everyone. They put him to the side and explained to him correctly the way of God. Now, what we speak of in the word, we speak correctly like we're doing today. Oh, we are passionate about Jesus. It's very unloving to not tell you the truth. That's unloving. What's very loving is to tell you the truth. And to be saved, it is through Christ. But God provides people that he teaches, he's to teach us his way more accurately, which is what? It's Jesus, the gospel. We read it earlier. I like you mentioned again in his um, sermon, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3 to 4. That's, that's the gospel. Jesus died for his sins. There was buried. There was raised. On the third day, according to the scriptures. See, when you ask people who didn't die in the Bible, you know the first thought is Jesus. No, Jesus died. He died for our sins. But they're teaching him the more correct way. Doesn't mean he was wrong. He knew the baptism. In John 14, chapter, six, uh, chapter 14, verses 6 to 7, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. See, there's nothing more accurate than Jesus. You know, if you don't know the answer to the Bible, Jesus. You can't go wrong. Right? But you also, there's a response. Okay? You need to respond to his word. You can't just sit there and be um, all Jesus and then respond. You can't live your old way of life. You've got to come to the cross. You've got to die. Then you've got to be raised again through Christ, from the cross, and be raised new. See, this is the way that that was explained to Apollos. And this is the way that we are explained to you. There's nothing new here. This, this gospel has been preached for thousands of years. It's been many years. I'm not giving you anything new. I'm just telling you exactly what's in the word. The way of God more accurately is Jesus. And if we don't know the way, we need to know the way through the word. That's how we guide people. Let me tell you this story quickly. There was this boy, very dark place at night and his whole house is asleep what he does he walks into his room and he sits down on the bed and he leans against the cupboard and he's crying he's got this big event coming up in a couple hours and he's just crying he doesn't know what to do he's crying
crying to God, asking God, help, help, help me. Help me with this big event. What am I, what message should I say? You know what this little boy does? Continues to cry and pray all night. Ask for energy, ask for uh, help with this big event. Now this big event comes and it's all done according to God's will. And he stuck true to the message of the gospel. See that little boy, that little boy that was crying, that was me. On Friday night, Friday morning, two o'clock in the morning, I'm crying because I don't know what message to give the big event, which was to Malanga on Saturday. God gave me the message of this gospel. See how weak we are when we're on our own. You've got to trust Christ. You've got to know his way. You need to read your word. If it is boring to you, pray and ask him. Don't, 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 please, don't, don't stop your word giving to me. If your word is boring, if God's word is boring to you, pray and ask him. Don't make it boring. Because there is something worse coming after. And he is the way, the way of God that is more accurately. The last point, we get to verse 27 and 28. And that is the church must continue to teach others that Jesus is the Messiah. If we sit up there, can we read together? When he wanted to cross over to Achaia, the brothers and sisters wrote to the disciples to welcome him. After he arrived, he was a great help to those who by grace had believed. For he vigorously refuted the Jews in public, demonstrating through the scriptures that Jesus is the Messiah. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, so Apollos, after being taught the way more correctly, wanted to go to Achaia. Now, if you can see there, Ephesus, that's where he's at now with uh, Aquila and Apollos. Achaia is the region. Corinth is where he went. He goes there, and he's full of energy. All right, that's what vigorous, vigorously is, full of energy. And he kept proving, refuted, kept proving to the, the scriptures that Jesus is the Messiah. Now, who's your Messiah today? Who is our Messiah? Is it money? Do you want a lot of money? Would that, would that save you? Do you want a new car? Maybe a house? Would that save you? Is that your Messiah? Your work? Maybe your own strength, your knowledge? Is that, is that your Messiah? Apollos kept refuting and proving from the scriptures that the actual Messiah is Jesus. See, now the Jews were waiting for a Messiah to come with a big army. How can they believe in a Messiah that died on a cross? But he kept proving through the scriptures that the Messiah is Jesus. And that is what we need to know. See, we need to know that there is only one Messiah as Jesus. Doesn't matter how many properties you have, 10 properties, not going to save you. Jesus is the only one. Everything he perishes. We heard that in Psalms 90. Man and God. Big difference. One lives eternal, one only a couple of years. 80 years, 70 years. Dead. So, we've been shown time and time here the scriptures that prove Jesus is the Messiah. We need training in the word. We need to be taught by God. And that's the Graphe model. That is the Graphe motto, which is John 6, 45. And they will all be taught by God. If you're not taught by God, then who are you taught by? Facebook? TikTok? Which one is it? The scriptures train us in God's word. 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 verses 16 and 17. If we see that, can we read it together? Or scripture is inspired by God and is profitable for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. It's the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is why we need the word, right, to teach us. So we can teach others and know our word. Otherwise, we're going to teach them something wrong. We need God first, open our hearts, get whatever rubbish is in here, and replace it with his word. All right? If you're up till 4 o'clock in the morning scrolling through Facebook stories or YouTube stories, maybe scroll through the book of uh, Hebrews or something. That will help. Okay? So we need to be trained by God so we can teach others more accurately the biblical Jesus. And that is the Messiah. Again, I'll summarize everything here. We must use scripture correctly. Don't twist it. Use what's there. Don't twist it to suit what other people want to hear, even though there's a lot of people. 
Don't twist it. Stick to it. Speak truthfully. We must ask God to open our hearts, to allow his people to teach us the way of God more accurately. And we can learn that through his word. But he also has servants, ministering saints. You know, in the Hebrews. We must know our word and teach others in our midst as well, as ourselves, that Jesus is the Messiah. Don't go and teach someone something and you're a hypocrite and then do it. We are not hypocrites. If you say you should forgive, you too should forgive someone. If you say, all right, um, I'm not going to lie anymore, and you still lie, or you go and tell someone, look, you should come to church and you don't come to church, don't do that. That's hypocrite. Teach the others the word, but teach yourself as well, and allow God to teach us. Amen.